No chances for Smith here. Treble 18, double 12. Game oh, nicely done. Second, and this is, this is kind Smith. of what Smith can do. And another opportunity for Mike Warburton. Who wins Game show the opening match the of match. Monday Mike on week Warburton. two of Series 9. Warburton the victor. Smith left to Rue miss doubles. And it's all business for Mike as he exits the stage with two points in his pocket. Strong start from him. Flawless in his first three winning legs. And then just took a little bit more time to cross the line in the fifth, but wins it in five legs, a 4-1 success over his fellow Welshman. Coming up next, we're going to see the Scotsman, Ross Montgomery, take on the debutant, Darren Barton. I have a theory on it, and I think it's because when you play in certain tournaments, you do sometimes just put your foot on the hockey to make sure it's pushed right up against the backboard. Sometimes there are um, tournaments where the hockeys move a little bit. No such problem here. Game show on the third. Very nice 114 in our first ton topper. This would be the ultimate salt in the wound shot. The 170 on offer here. And it could go. Not to be the case, but Montgomery will leave it handy. And Barton may have to pull out a plum himself. Yeah, he's left it very handy indeed. Barton on the 150. Goes the new way. 76 scored, 74 left. He's going treble 14 is the usual route. Yep. 90. Ross, you require 36. So that's Ross Montgomery then for his first win of the week. Over to double nine. Go Ross Montgomery gets it. The match. A 14 Ross dart Montgomery. leg to finish the match. A 4 1 convincing win for him. Over Darren Barton. Darren Barton will be now knowing exactly. A nice bit of encouragement there from Ross Montgomery. Nice bit of encouragement for the lad. And that's really cool to see. Camaraderie. A nice win there. 89.73 for Montgomery. Not too bad for Darren Barton on first visit. 87.14. He'll build on that. We're going to go into, into a short break. And when we return, it will be Andreas Harrison taking on Dennis van der Ender. Yeah, he's uh, that's a little bit of the Monday morning blues 36. here for Dennis, that's for sure. On a double after 12 again. After the first leg, he shook his head after taking 20 darts. And in the next few, he's been on a finish after four visits and on a double pretty much after four visits every time. This is sensational from Andreas Harrison. The average won't tell the story because of those missed darts at Game double. But Andreas Harrison has put in a stellar showing Andreas there for most of Harrison. that match. He wins it 4-1. The stats, well, they kind of do lie at the end of this game because he missed 16 darts at double, the bulk of them in the same leg. But the rest of the match, he was scoring fantastically. Five tons, 4-140s, 2-180s. And our former Super Series champion gets a 4-1 victory over Dennis van der Ende, who looks like having a long week if he can't improve on that level of performance. Harrison gets a comfortable win, just as Warburton did in the first match, just as Montgomery did in the second, and the boss will be back in the fourth. He takes on the bearded dragon, Justin Smith, after the break. So a pair of eights to get the Yay, job done, and that is a fantastic in turnaround in the fortunes of both of these players, really. Smith was beaten 4-1 by Mike Warburton, before Ross Montgomery won 4-0. Now the boss has been beaten by that same 4-0 scoreline. The Smith seals the win. How can that be, says Ross Montgomery? Well, that's an indication as to why Smith posting the first ton-topping average of week two of Series 9. Great performance from him. Showed how to bounce back from defeat and picks up his first point. So the top four all now have two points. We did think it might start to go this way. And Mike Warburton is looking to build on his win over Smith earlier when he takes on Dennis van der Ender. Mike, you're required so, 20. Warburton comes back for 20 for the match. Yay, he makes no mistake match. whatsoever, Mike, Mike Warburton. Warburton. He opens up his Group A campaign with two wins on the bounce. Nice little fist bump between the two after the match and 
to there with a 77, but Wallerton with a business-like 83.66, four from 10 on his doubles. It's all about putting those two points on that Group A table for Mike Warburton. He heads off the stage a happy man. We head into a break, and when we return, we will be back with debutant Darren Barton taking on Andreas Harrison. That Darren Barton is wearing, it feels like one that Harrison should be wearing himself. One blue, yellow, blue works out for Barton on this occasion. Game shot on the four flag, Andreas Harrison. Darren Barton, but will he get a chance? Back up top then. Game and away he goes again. Match. Andreas Harrison Andreas really is Harrison. starting to open up his legs here and sprint away into the distance. What a match that was. Darren Barton has a wry smile on his face. And yeah, if you looked at those two there and you said, which one's the Swede? You wouldn't say it was the one with the beard. But there's all the stats you need to know. 102.71. From Andreas Harrison. Justin, you require Again, there was an option there to go for the ball and leave himself 76 minimum. Another in there, though, for Justin Smith. For double 16. Yay! Wow, what a way to win it. Well, it didn't matter what Dennis left because Smith took it out. A whopper of a finish to get the game 1 4 2 and to pick up his second win from his three matches so far today. Justin Smith. Signs that one off in style. 86.16. That was a 146, yeah. One hundred and eighty. Well he gave himself the pep talk, Andreas Harrison, and it seems to have done the trick. It certainly has. But even though kicking off with a one eighty here, Ross has got the experience to know that. As long as he hits a treble hey, and stays want. close. You sort of weathered the storm a little bit. Well, what's happening here? What is happening here? One he's gone 180. 171 in his left 150. Now he's done this before and gone for three bulls. Would he dare to do that again? Depends where this one goes from Ross, I 137. think. 137. Andres, you require 150. Oh, he did go for it. <laughs> Montgomery <laughs> in the background going, uh, well, yeah, I, I love it. Well, I think he went for it anyway. He would have been the greatest nine dart finish of all time. Make no mistake about that. Andres, you require 20. Two tens. And there it Yay, is. Harrison. Gets the job done. Andreas Harrison. And it was a game rolled in glitter and almost had one of the most famous legs ever. Ross Montgomery just telling him, don't do that. Don't do that. But Harrison, well, I was going to say almost did, but the attempt at the bullseye wasn't really as close as he would have liked. Montgomery himself got in on the act when he nearly took out 140 with two tops. A pair, plenty of respect at the end of it, but the points go the way of Andreas Harrison. The debrief will continue, but the victory is Harrison's, and it's a victory that takes him to three wins from three. Again, another good performance, an average of 92.56. The story could have been so different. It could have all been about one leg, but in the end, it's the effectiveness of Andreas Harrison in picking up wins, and he gets another one, 4-2 over Ross Montgomery. Coming next, hoping to join him with three wins from three, Mike Warburton, who takes on Darren Barton number Darren, you require 160. and sometimes you can hear it in the tone of the referee's voice that they they call the number in a slightly different tone because they know they've left something they didn't mean to maybe calling game shot game here what a moment that is for the spartan there. darren barton, barton. who produces a sizable shot respected but by his opponent and that is something for the highlight game. reel for him well we'll be looking for another one of those not to be this time round, but with Barton back on 275, he'll be feeling it's almost job done. Unless Barton popped up with a 180. 82. 
Mike can require 76. And there it is. A hat trick of victories Mike for Mike Warburton. That one sealed with a nice clean curl of that 76. And it's been a good performance, all told, despite the brilliance of Barton, who threatened a perfect leg with six perfect darts in it. He also took out 160 the moment of the day for him, but he couldn't turn it into a victory because Mike Warburton was simply so good. An average of 96, four out of five on the doubles, and three wins from three for Warby. He'll return for his 200th game against Andreas Harrison very soon. But before that, Barton will play Smith and Van der Ender will take on Ross Montgomery. That in turn offers Van der Ender a chance at this 114 and double 18 game incoming. And four as you Dennis say, Murph, it's the doubles that have been causing the problem for Montgomery. It was his mistake. And in these moments... You have to start thinking, I got myself in it. I can get myself out of it. Fifty-three. Having missed all those darts at double. 45. Hitting the bullseye was never likely. And Dennis van der Ender may be about to bring an end to his losing streak. And he does. Yay, sneaks it in the corner. The and Dennis gets the victory over Ross Montgomery. Well, he knows how he lost that game. 17 missed starts at double. The reason for his defeat. But you have to give credit to Dennis van der Enne for taking advantage of that. And in fact, hitting exactly half of his double attempts to get the win. A 4-2 win over the Scott Ross Montgomery. 114, the highlight for the Dutchman in that one. And he picks up his first points of the day. Darren Barton hoping to do the same when he takes on Justin Smith after the break. Well, Darren Barton, not quite toast yet. Is he going to go with darts four, five, and six? 140. Yeah, he's going for the boring nine darter as well. But he might get it. One hundred. Darren, keeping him more than honest. Ninety-six. Barton coming through the ADC qualifiers. What have you made of him so far at first look, Scott? One hundred and yeah, seventy-seven. Like I, I know that he's got a game in him. One. I think it's one of those debutants who is going to sort of flow into the week. I think. One hundred and twenty. Have to learn here in Group A. But as with Van der Ender, he's been getting better with every match and feeling more comfortable with every match. Well, this is some start from Justin Smith. 168. Every single dart that has scored points in this leg has hit a big treble. He's thrown... Eight darts in big 36. trebles, and the other one bounced out. Game what a leg. Ten darts. What a start Justin from Justin Smith. Smith. The card. Are they better off not having one? Are they better off being able to play ADC, WDF, Motor Super Series? 43. And that's Justin one of those debates 87. that I don't see an end to. I think it's just going to continue to roll on. Well, this match... May come to an end if Smith can bag the ball. Not 44. quite. But Barton on an outsider. Darren, you record 161. 
Oh, Had a 1 6 in his previous three. game, but the 1 6 1 was beyond him. And Smith can put the match beyond him here. 11 for double 16. Game and Smith seals it. Match. Emphatic Justin in victory. Smith. A win that sees Smith go level on points with the two at the top, Andreas Harrison and Mike Warburton. In fact, he splits the difference between the pair of them in the league table after a really polished performance. 96.97 the average. Four out of seven on the doubles. Really good stuff from Smith. And he finds himself sitting in second place on the same points as the so far unbeaten Harrison and Warburton who are going to do battle after the break. Andreas, you require 70. So, Andreas, it is once again double 16 to take the all important 54. win. Might you require 140? Once again, it escapes him, but this would be a mighty ask from Warburton. I did just wonder if one moment of magic was going to win it. 105. But Harrison returns. Andreas, you require 60. To maintain the perfect day. Game and he gets it. A 4-3 success Harrison. over Mike Warburton in a game that didn't get off the ground in truth. Both players had won all of the matches in the build-up to that one. But it's Andreas Harrison who makes it four from four. He really had to work hard for it. The pair kind of played each other. It was a real battle. A real battle, 4-3. Har Harrison winning that one. Darren Barton takes on Dennis van der Ende after the break. Harrison Should get required. at least one dart at tops. Game Nicely Shane done by Barton. Barton. Nicely done. Darren Barton. We're worried about the second dart being so close, but he gets his first win on the board, Darren Barton. He has now achieved. He'll be pleased with that as well. The averages, well, they're middle of the road. Four from 11 on the doubles for Barton. Two from eight from Van der Ender. The fact of the matter is, Barton gets his first points. He'll be pleased with that on day one. We head into a short break and we will return with Mike Warburton taking on the boss, Ross Montgomery. Ross, you require 142. In fact, I'm going to return to that stat 66. in a moment because there are going to be some disappointed players come Saturday night. Warburton, 46. no need to be disappointed in this game Ross yet, but Montgomery will get a chance to put right the wrong. That leaves 32. Good thinking. Good finish. And that after a setup, a five. Ross Montgomery. Still does the business, but is it too late? Wolverton with tops. One to go for a 4 1 win. 25. Russia require 80. Montgomery then to keep fighting. He's gone for tops, tops. So he kind of did it half-heartedly, to be fair, to ensure he did get a dart to win 60. the leg. Might you require? 40. And then the one that he went half-heartedly with turned out to be the problem for the one that he went full-heartedly with. So Warburton here Game just needs tops for a 4-1 win, and that's Mike exactly Warburton. what he does. Warburton... Stays up there level with Ander Andreas at the top of the table with that 4-1 win. 92 He'll be pleased with that. And once again, when you look at the Dublin stats, four from eight from Warburton, one from seven from Montgomery. That's been his Achilles heel today. We're heading to a short break.
And we'll be back with our final match of the day, which is Justin Smith taking on Andreas Harrison. Needs a treble. What a dart this would be. Can't manage it. So Harrison. I imagine it'll be treble 15. Require 81. That was the plan. 16. Leaves the ball. Which he nails to keep the game going. I couldn't get near it earlier today, but suddenly he sneaks it in. I think what you can say is that mistake that he made, as simple a mistake as it was, he's now owned that mistake and said, I've got myself in it. I'm good enough to get myself out of it. Is he going tops, tops here? No, sensible play. Well, as long as he doesn't bust it. 60. And that is really sensible. Made sure he didn't. So these looks to be Harrison's last darts of the day. 99, Justin, you require 40. Hadn't been beaten in his first four. Has now Game as Justin Smith match. sees Justin off Smith. Andreas Harrison in a last leg decider, which means... That three players are all tied at the top. Eight points apiece. Nothing to separate them at all. The same leg difference as well for Warburton, Harrison and that man Smith. Three at the top on eight points. Three at the bottom on two points. And what a game to end the day. An average of 96.2 for Justin Smith. Slightly more than that of Andreas Harrison. And he managed to gather himself having squandered a 3-1 lead. Harrison hit back. But Smith with a brilliant closing leg. 14 darts to get the job done. And myself... And Scott Mitchell will dissect all of today's action and discuss who we think might be making it through to Saturday, where you could be part of our audience. Is in this group really battling to be there. Let's reflect on what we've seen so far. Um, Scott, it was looking like it might be a perfect day for Andreas Harrison, uh, but it kind of, well, I won't say went wrong at the end. It kind of went wrong in the match before, the one that he won against Mike Warburton, and then he played really well against Justin Smith, but... Loses that one. Funny old game. Yeah, that can happen. I think you, you can be really confident for three games and then the Warburton game happened. But even though you've won it, you know that you probably, you were skating on thin ice. So then that makes you think that you're not quite playing as well as maybe you're being a little bit harsh on yourself at times. And then that last game pretty much showed it. Every time he, he looked like getting to a double, he kind of gave it up. But... Gave himself for too much to do there from 3-1 down against Justin Smith. Yep, Harrison certainly looked a very confident man earlier in the day, didn't he? When he attempted that remarkable nine-dart finish. We're having a look at it here. So he's hit the 180 and, and we kind of said immediately now he must have been thinking about the 171 followed by three balls. What did you make of it? Yeah, it's obviously something that's on his mind. He's one of the ones that's been lucky enough to do a, what we call a conventional nine-darter if there is such a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, he obviously had that idea and had that idea in his mind. Maybe he practices the ball's eyes and hits three ball's eyes quite often. Maybe that's the reason for it. But yeah, it, uh, it's one of those. And, and it kind of went downhill from there for him on the day, really. Uh, safe to say Ross Montgomery wasn't a fan. No, I think Ross is, uh, uh, you put me on the spot there. I know what you're doing um, uh, with my dear friend. Um, no, I, I think you're, um, you're right. I think Ross will actually say what he feels and, and sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't. I mean, on this particular occasion, I find it quite funny because Ross obviously then went for the 140 to go tops, tops to say, all right, fella, I can do the same. And it, and it nearly came off, but that, that's just how Ross is. Yeah, nearly took it out, by the way, that 140. Um, look, no nine data, but we did have a 10 data from Justin Smith earlier today. He's had a, a fantastic day, hasn't he? Started with it with a very convincing victory, and he ends it by beating Andreas Harrison. Lots of good stuff along the way from Smith. He looks good, doesn't he? Yeah, and, and uh, looking at that now for the second time, that was quite fortunate. It did fall out. It was in the five by the look of it. So, um, yeah. But no, very impressive to have a 10 data with, with one on the floor as well. But he's sort of grown into it. You know, it was a tough first game playing his mate, Mike Warburton. First game on on the Monday morning. Didn't quite go his way, but 
Yeah, he's gathered his thoughts, gathered his process, and uh, yeah, he's, he's sat there at the top with him on eight points now. Yeah, with Warburton as well. What, what have you thought of him? Again, the only real blot in the copybook was that defeat to Harrison, where neither player turned up. Mike, Mike's, Mike's one of those that you know what's coming. He's got that level game. We spoke about it with the likes of Darius and things last week. This week, he's the one that does that. He's that 90 average man. He keeps doing it and doing it. He might drop a little under. He'll step it up and go over if he needs to. But he's got that level game and that, that ceiling. And that's, that's Mike Warburton's game all over. And, and consistency in Group A usually sees you doing well. Nothing to split the top three in the table, all of them on eight points and with the same leg difference. In fact, Warburton, Harrison, same amount of legs won as well. So Justin Smith falls into third by virtue of legs won. And then at the bottom of the table, Barton, Montgomery and Van Der Ende all on two points. We've got a real split here. It's already looking like a battle for winning the group between the top three and the others are kind of battling it out for Group C. Do you think that someone like Ross Montgomery could put a day together where he gets four, maybe five wins and, and just changes the complexion of that group? Oh, most definitely. He has the capability of that. What, what I, I wonder about there, looking at that table, is uh, the top three fearing dropping out because that can be a negative thought and once you start speaking thinking negatively then you can start playing negatively and, and trying to defend rather than continue so now that there's a gap there there's still plenty of games for those at the bottom to catch up and like you say it only needs one of them to grab a, a four out of five day and uh, they're back in the mix and Harrison and Smith are going to play each other in the first game tomorrow so one of them will have the outright lead after that how much of an impact could that have to kind of set the stall out for the day? I think it could have a massive impact on the group because obviously the ones at the lower end of the table, that's them putting the points higher and then you are running out of games. But I, I, I think that, uh, yeah, the, the table could be decided more than in the first few games tomorrow. The pattern could be set anyway. Whether it's decided is another batter, but it will set the game pattern. Look, it's going to be close, nothing between them, but have you seen anything from any of them that suggests they've got the advantage to win this group? Do you know, if I'm looking at it now and the way that Justin Smith has just finished, I would say on today's performance, Justin Smith looks to be the one that could go, go ahead and, and win the group because he's just playing with that, that mid-90 ceiling at the moment. It's, it's, he's just playing lovely. But... We know that no two days are the same in darts. And uh, yeah, it's what Justin Smith turns up tomorrow. Absolutely fair shout. Thanks for your company today. Thank you for your company as well on Monday here at the Modus Soup Series. The action continues on Tuesday, of course. 9.30am is the start time here on the Modus Soup Series YouTube channel. We hope to see you then.